I would say that Whistler is probably the capital of mountain biking. This is a special place um, for any mountain biker, I guess, because uh, of all the history this place has, uh, all the trails that are around here, and just the community that brings an uh, unbelievable vibe. This is a breeding ground for incredible athletes and minds of our sport, so I think that pushed uh, outward and uh, has really reached every corner of the earth here. For me, it's incredible to call Whistler my home. I feel I live the American dream, coming from South America with nothing on the hands. And <laughs> after a year, like getting everything I dream of, make it into a pro team, and to stay here in Whistler and ride the mega, this place is just incredible. Canada is a beautiful place. The wildness, you know, it's not often that you take your bike, you go out for a ride and then you see a couple of bears. You have so many people riding, so many people building trails as well. It pushes the level higher up. I think uh, we help push the world to progress different styles of riding in terms of trail networks in addition to talent itself. It is something you wear with you in your heart. You know, I think that the people are riding here with a bike and the heart. Whistler is an ideal spot to have uh, potentially the year's biggest enduro race. From all the aspects of progression that this riding mecca has uh, given the world, it truly is like a dreamland for cycling. The holes need to be fed. Eating up an extra pair of balls for this week. <laughs> <laughs> so now... Hmm? You can take them. <laughs> <laughs> this feels so wrong. There are some of the most demanding uh, stages that you have on the AWS circuit. They are quite wide, so that means there is uh, various of the line options. It means uh, you need to be creative when you write. Mid-season, I feel especially now this vlog, I'm with my teeth out. I just want to go fast. After the pro stage was done on Saturday, I was like, yeah, I'm third. And that is not out of luck. I was like, yeah, I can do this. And that's the feeling I'm carrying on. I have nothing to lose, everything to win. <laughs> pro stage, everything was going very well. So, um, we had a mechanical a wheel issues. Luckily, it was only half a minute away from the finish line, so we decided to run as fast as possible. Everyone knows what this race in Whistler means, so for us, performing well here, it's a big opportunity to really boost the image of Orbea here in North America. Racing at home finally. Yeah, whole crew on top, really be on top. Wake up every morning with drive. Being on the grind, no, I had to survive. We had to win. Started from the dirt and the bubble. I had to be the needle that was popping. To get on the podium, whatever world <laughs> stage you want to be on it, is push. There's no safe bet, not playing safe because at that level, 
everybody's good, everybody's trained, and getting the proper mindset, I would say, is a huge thing. Obviously, I rode a little bit differently, which was not too bad at the end because it was a long race and you had to be conservative anyways. My mindset was like, I'm gonna give it all. If I wanna achieve this, I'm not gonna play it safe, never. And that's what I did the whole race. It was exhausting. <laughs> Maybe I pushed a little bit too hard sometimes, but yeah, I actually ended up 25th, so I hope I keep up the space, just eliminate some of the mistakes and should be good for next round. We managed to, to cross the finish line in 10, which was a bit of a victory after the pro stage. And now we see Flo and Spinetta head also. Flo on the gas. I thought this moment will never come and to make it through like after all what happened in my career is just uh, I'm really grateful and I'm happy about it. I don't have anything left in my legs, in my arms, in my heart, so I'm really happy to make it to the podium. It was taken out like out of a dream probably. Because even if I would have planned it, it wouldn't have been so good and so perfect and so emotional. When I explain my job to anyone, they're like, oh. You're actually living the dream, you know, you're traveling the world, getting paid to do so and ride your bikes, but it's not always like this, you know. Traveling takes a lot of energy out of the man, but then again, uh, if you think from the good things, we saw some epic places, we drank some of the best coffee, um, I don't know, we had some good times with the team. I think gratitude is a really important thing to feel. It's easy to get the pressure leak into your mind and stop enjoying, but we are lucky. We are here doing something super rad, like racing bikes. So sports fans are ready for a half disaster or full disaster. The East Coast is delivering the best weather possible. Greasy conditions for sure, um, slippery routes, rocks are kind of fine but it's supposed to dry out for, for the weekend on Sunday so it uh, should be fast. Uh, I think this is going to be a really physical venue. It's going to be pretty old school, no lift access with uh, really physical stages. For sure will be important the nutrition, no? those two times climbing on the top, they are demanding. A pre-raised dinner for us, generally we go salmon, so it's a salmon, it's white potato, try and go with a lighter protein so the body doesn't have to take too much energy to digest it. They have a big breakfast and then they go and attack some stages early doors then. In the morning before I'm trying to eat as many calories as possible because we're going to be consuming a lot of calories through the day. At least eat, I would say, a bar every stage or every liaison. I made a sandwich uh, just to make sure I eat something salty because it's a lot based on sugar.
Yeah, sick wipes, sick racing, sick stages. Time to gain some time back, I guess. Yeah, I think as a team it's uh, super important that we took some days off after we finish um, actually first two races. Uh, we went with, to the lake with the crew and yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> although it wasn't any racing or stuff, everybody was still going flat out. I think um, this is uh, important for the team to chill together a little bit as well because um, being together for so long it can be intense as well. You know, there is a lot of work, a lot of uh, stuff is going on, and uh, some downtime definitely helps everybody to, to relax. Check this out, the race face stuff, bone dry. Well, it should be called sugar loam. The bad thing is that we are too many riders, so the loam is gone. <laughs> So welcome to Sugar Rock. Wow, it was hard to get the the flow today because like pretty much most of the tracks were fresh cut and they were keep changing and it was wet and it was quite gnarly to be honest. It will be a big challenge when comes a race on Sunday for sure. told you like to be there you gotta push in this race in particular is really tricky the conditions are bleak like not predictable still when I'm like Phew! I go and it's too much energy so I need to learn to hold my horses a little bit <laughs> here was full of man my bike is full of man yeah. uh, first stages <laughs> down once but uh, the pace was there and we were not far off which means that we are still all in for the Sunday. When you're inside the top five you can't really complain. There is also the underdogs that want to be on the podium tomorrow and I feel like I'm one of them at the moment. <laughs> It was a really tough race to venue with changing conditions, kind of unpredictable. It's a good balance by the end of the trip. It feels awesome to be back up with the mix. 
I'm stoked for end up on the high note and just carry the momentum to the next races. Finally, decent. Yeah. <laughs> The result of today is a proof that we've been going in the right direction and that we just needed time to uh, to come close to, to our dreams. We finish really, really great. We start great also with the third place of Flo. But guys were struggling a little bit and uh, I think today we will prove that uh, we belong there at the top. Yes! It might be a small step for a man. For, uh, for this work.